I think it's fair to say that scale modelling has an image as a man's hobby or a boy's hobby, rather than one for everyone. But of course, it is for everyone. And we could debate and never come to a conclusion as to why we think this may be. But of course, scale modelling is for everybody. And this video is being released on International Women's Day 2024. And so what better way of celebrating than by handing today's build over to my actual real life partner, who by the power of magic will appear next to me now. Okay, what's your name and why are you in my house? I'm on our ages. <laughs> I'm in your house because uh, I broke in last night and you wouldn't let me leave. Right, okay, fair enough. And what are we doing here? I don't know. What are we doing here? Oh, yes, we're going to make a kit. Right, well, so I'm going to make a kit. And why have we chosen the uh, this particular kit instead of, for example, the starter set, Spitfire, tank, cars, boat, whatever else? Because I am a massive Japanese Japan nerd and I wanted to make a Japanese plane and so I went for the Zeta. Mm. Which is a really important point because a key part of staying involved in a hobby is having a personal interest to it and if you're just making a Spitfire and you're not interested in Spitfires then you're not going to be interested. Yeah. Uh, which is good because Airfix are releasing a lifeboat so anyone that likes lifeboats one sec, can then get involved. One quick amendment I'm going to make There you go. <laughs> we are not using those paints. We are not using, uh, we might use the paintbrush. We're not using the cement. We are going to use just the kit and we'll talk about that shortly. Anything you're looking forward to, anything you're worried about, anything you're nervous about, anything you think you're going to throw across the room? Um, nervous, worried about the whole thing, basically. Okay. This is, this is it's like... It's just gluing bits of plastic together. It's but, it, but it's something new. It's something different. And that in itself is terrifying by default and my prior experience has been I've had negative feedback looping with okay. trying new things in the past so and there's also my own self pressure in that I want to make this and I want to make something good. I've already made one of these and if yours looks like total crap we'll just pretend that the one I made a few years ago is the one you've made. So the, the people there won't know that, obviously. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, as long as we don't keep this but, bit in. But, but, I, but, <laughs> I, but you'll know. I'll, I will okay. know that. This is, a, this is a self thing. Like, what they think, regardless. And then before we crack it open and start uh, working on it mm -hmm. and doing the kit. Yeah. Um, any opinion as to why this hobby may be associated with men more than women? Just the perception of vehicles in general are seen as male associated hobbies like, like, the, like the military that too, but more car like vehicles in general cars planes tanks if you think vehicles they're you know car shows as well discovery wings those sorts of things feel like those are men hobbies and they've got hard rough edges and the military in general i hmm. think certainly very much historically has always been a male dominated atmosphere with all of its Good point. Associated points. And certainly the history narrative doesn't talk about the women involved as much as it does the men when you're talking about war history as well. This so, doesn't have a female pilot in it, for example. To the best of my knowledge, I, I haven't... They're, they're plastic haven't pilots. Jumped. I don't really care about that. <laughs> you can't gender plastic. <laughs> Tagline, you can't gender plastic. <laughs> oh, you can. Right. Shall we go? Yep. So to begin with, I'd like to clarify that I did not put the camera in its usual place as, well, it can be hard enough starting something you're not familiar with for the first time, let alone having to also worry about positioning it within frame and things. And it is a notably different experience making a model on camera. So I thought instead we would show more of a general sweep of Orin Edges building the plane rather than piece by piece. I do have another one in the stash and it will be featured on the channel in the future. So don't worry, normal content for this kit will appear at some stage. Whilst I did not exclude any of my tools or equipment, I did want to try and keep it as simple as possible for her because, again, this is a brand new experience and I didn't want to get too complicated with too many fancy things, so it's all just Tamiya side cutters, a couple of files, some sandpaper, a knife, the usual sort of thing. 
as you've already seen, I threw the supplied kits out and uh, these ones are my uh, from my usual collection. So you can see the Hataka blue line there on the corner of the desk. Uh, usually I film which paint I'm using so that I can remember when I'm editing which one I actually painted. Whereas here, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's the American interior green, so the US Navy one. That would make the most sense because it's quite a vivid green. Um, I just brush painted on with the humbrol brush. Again, not a strict requirement. I didn't say, oh, you have to use this brush, but it's not a bad brush and I use them for interior stuff all the time anyway. So all good. I wasn't doing hand holding during this process, I mean, obviously, because otherwise she wouldn't be able to use her hands to make the plane. But uh, I was in the room doing something else in the background. Uh, I was working on another plane, actually, on a little coffee table that I brought in here. Uh, so I am available for asking help during all of this process, which is why you occasionally see my shadows or my limbs or coming in, just offering some support. The Revell contactor and the Tamiya Extra Thin were the cements of choice, and I gave a little bit of a, an indication. You use this one for this, and if you need this, then this, but it's really a preference thing. And generally, I think it was the Extra Thin that got used a bit more, which isn't an issue it's not what I would have done but uh, like I say the options were there it was not for me to decide how the plane was being made so for most of this point I was there and I was answering some questions but honestly this was just reading the instructions and gluing everything together and just kind of uh, scurrying away with a little job and uh, as you can see uh, once the wings and tail assembly are all glued together it looks rather smart and it has a decent looking interior with the decals in there as well so yeah so far so good. On to the painting and first step is the primer, which in this case is the Tamiya Grey from a rattle can. It's just one that I have in my collection and it seemed appropriate given the colour of this aircraft. She did like to get a bit close at times, but hey, that comes with experience. So there may have been an incident. Yeah, the moral of the story there is if you're using primer in the kitchen, don't then make crackers, uh, cheese and crackers above the uh, freshly painted model. But hey, I ate the cracker and it only cost me two days of work. The actual top coat was airbrushed. Now, this was also another topic of discussion because uh, brush painting is generally where I would go to for a beginner. But the paint that I had in this case, it is the Vallejo IJN Ash Grey is airbrush ready. So it felt more appropriate to actually airbrush rather than brush paint because it's a bit thin and I didn't want to buy another paint. So we had this discussion beforehand and I thought, hey, why not give it a go anyway? And then gloss varnish was brush painted on top of that, ready for the decals, which, as I'm sure she will say at the end, was absolutely the best bit of the entire build. To keep things simple and demonstrating how convenient these airfix kits are for beginners, there were no softeners or anything used, no um, Microsoft Microset, no decal fix, nothing like that. It was just straight on and then dabbed with a handkerchief or cotton bud as necessary. And there's not that many. There's a few that are really awkward, but there's not that many on this kit. So I think overall, not too bad. The final stages were then done. Uh, as I've kind of suggested I've not shown all of the footage for this I didn't film everything but you can see the metallic metallic you can see the metallic blue wheel well the black of the inside of the propeller blade things like that we'll talk about that right at the end the actual specifics uh, but they they were done off camera and the canopy was also hand painted with my preferred brush and it was done on the spree because it's actually very convenient in this case to do so and we are back. Um, how long did that take? A couple of weeks? I think so, yeah. Yeah, a few sessions over a couple of weeks. Not very intense. Uh, the plane will be appearing on the little spinny thing just after this, but I wanted a quick debrief before we go any further. So, how did you find it? It was... At, part, at some points it was really relaxing. I was like, this is nice. And then there was moments of, oh my word, why is this your method of relaxation? <laughs> and then it's like, oh, these are the easy transfers. Like, why? Yeah, so is there any, anything in particular you did or didn't like? There's a learning curve of place transfer, a line transfer, so it's perfect. Move finger, knock transfer. <laughs> so... What if that happens? Aw yeah. Awareness of hand plane spin and 
painting skills are very tiny parts. Overall, despite the fact that there were many moments which were stressful, like this curvy thing here, I do it's not like. Yeah, I do not like the curved transverse. There's a lot of skill that goes into making kits that, when you see what's made, yeah. so many people modelers make it look a lot easier than it is. But yeah, you just there, you just a, chuck the glue in the box, shake, and boop. But there's definitely a tangible sense of achievement once you've made the thing. Yeah. But do you like it? Yeah, I, I think it came out well. And looking at it again and noticing, I, I did that. I, I did. I learned. Yeah. Nice. I have you, so I, I don't. I definitely recommend to people. It's nice to find yourself a hobbyist and another modeler, or watch YouTube videos just to familiarise yourself with what you're getting into because looking at the instructions it can be a bit what is this this mm. that i'm not is, familiar with this? yeah and i was using a lot of uh technical say technical terms the uh correct terms for things so no no leading edge or trailing edge um as opposed to the front or the back of the wing but then what's the front and what's the back if you don't oh yeah follow the, the terminology uh, i think it came out really well i like the look of that very very smart uh, right. One thing that I do need from you mm -hmm. uh, is to tell the people to like, subscribe, follow, and all of that stuff. So I I have been threatened. So please do like, subscribe, and Not or... notification bell. Uh, oh yeah, the bell. Change the bell. Or the... change the bell. But yeah. Right. So like, subscribe, follow, change the bell. So to have the bit where it comes up, but unless you don't want to, because they can be very annoying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, notifications so, can be very annoying, so can videos. Yeah. yeah so like liking and subscribing, and you know, watch the videos. Tell tell your friends. Tell the people around you. Uh, find us on OnlyFans. What? 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 Happy International Women's Day. Yeah. Say goodbye. So here we go, the end result. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to mention. Firstly, there is no pitot tube. It was too small, it was too fiddly, and the hole had mostly seized up from the paint. So that didn't bother going in. Also, the cowling was painted separately. It was brush painted, and it was painted with United States Navy Midnight Black or something along those lines. Basically, it's a really, 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 really dark blue. And it's the first time I've looked at the nose of a zero and gone... Ah, oh, yeah, that looks like a really, really, really dark blue and not just black. So very, very happy with that. Uh, that was at my dis uh, my direction, but of course I did not do any of the work. And yeah, this is a pretty respectable plane. For a first attempt, I am very, very impressed. Uh, I think she has done a wonderful job and should be proud of herself. Obviously, it is not perfect. Some of the decals are a little bit wonky and, well, the paint is a bit patchy in places and all the other stuff you would kind of expect. But despite a few obstacles, mostly just mental obstacles, uh, yeah, really, really impressive. I do also feel that she needs to read the instructions first and then dry fit, rather than just go straight in with a kind of glancing blow at the instructions and then just dunk straight into cement and chuck in. But hey, that's the sort of thing that you learn when you've messed up a couple of kits. I suppose I should really now give the rating. So, for the International Women's Day Airfix Zero, I give a solid... A pair of frickin' women's liquor! Out of... Women's liquor! Yes, father, yes! Ten. A final shout out to my channel members. Thank you very much for the support that you have given this channel. Don't forget to do what Orin Edge says and obey the algorithm. And hopefully I will see you in another video in the near future. So once again, thanks from me and good day. Let's have a sip. Oh, right. That's not part of the filming. It can be. Yeah. Okay. That's sponsored by you. Right. Um, because... And look that way. <clears throat> <laughs> Never work with children or animals. <laughs> oh, this is all cuttable. <laughs> oh, my voice. You can stop that.